Good afternoon and welcome to our annual memorial service for our residents here at Springmore. It is a humbling privilege to be with you today. I want to begin by thanking Mrs. Sue Polly, who is our pianist for this afternoon, and also thank you to Anita Burroughs Price, our harpist. It is wonderful for them to share their gifts with us. Today we join in an annual service of remembrance. We remember those whose lives who have been woven together with ours, people with whom we have shared life's sorrows and joys, people who have come to the end of their journey and have left us to continue on our way without their physical presence. We remember that as families, and friends and neighbors of those who have died that we bear the sorrow of loss. Yet we celebrate them with joy and with hope. Death has drawn us together, but more so the extraordinary thread of life which inextricably joins us. Remembering the blessings of laughter and love that we've shared, the lessons we've learned, the sweet communion that joins us to our dear ones that we've lost. Today we honor them by gathering and remembering. And so let us open our hearts to one another as we share those special moments in the spirit of remembering, giving thanks, and celebrating love.
Our first reading comes from a book that's written by Jan Richardson called The Cure for Sorrow, Blessings for Times of Grief. Because I do not know any medicine for grief, but to let ourselves grieve. Because I do not know any cure for sorrow, but to let ourselves sorrow. Because I do not know any remedy, but to let the heart break, to let it fall open, then to let it fall open still more. Because I do not know how to mend the unmendable, fi unfixable, unhealable wound that keeps finding itself healed as we tend it, as we follow the line of it, as we let it lead us on the path it knows. Because I do not know any solace but to give ourselves into the love that will never cease to find us, that we will never lose, that will never lose its hold on us, that will never abandon us to the sorrow for which it holds the cure. Our first congregational hymn is found in your bulletin, Sing With All the Saints in Glory, and please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Hear now these words from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away, 
And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, this night, this day. Thanks be to God. I recall the first time I read this scripture to comfort a family as they had lost a most beloved 98-year-old matriarch. Not only of their family, but she was the matriarch of the entire church community and the entire community at large as well. And I thought to myself, I was young and early in my ministry, and I felt the heaviness, the weight of the pain and the grief. And I thought, what should I pray? And this scripture came to my mind. And as I read the words amidst the profound sadness, the heaviness of the pain of death, there was a glimmer of hope that emerged from John's promise of the vastness of God's love and a vision of God's presence all around us. When the community felt out of control and lost, the reassurance of God being Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, was such a comfort that it not only steadied me, but it steadied the community as well. We come today to remember and to celebrate the lives of Springmore residents who have died since last fall. Our hope in this service is to honor our losses and to celebrate those wonderful lives that we've lost. We remember those dear who have gone before us. It's in the reading of scripture, the singing of hymns, the beautiful gift of Anita's harp in this liturgy of worship that we find comfort in our time of mourning. And just as we are all different, our grief is unique to each of us. For some of us, our losses were sudden. For others, each loss of ability of our loved ones was grieved. But we all share one thing in common that hole in our hearts. When you're stricken by grief, it's as if you are moving in slow motion. At times, the depth of grief buckles our knees as though we are under a heavy and wet blanket. And we know grief comes in waves, waves of sorrow, but sometimes waves of joy. A family member recently asked me if it was normal to feel joy and gratitude that their loved one had passed away. Of course, I said, it reassured them that grief is this bittersweet mixing of joy and sorrow together. When the foundation of a parent's love or a spouse of decades is gone, we are unsure of what our world will look like with them gone. It's then that the world seems darkest. But we are not alone. Throughout history, people have wondered about death, this mixture of all these emotions, and we have questions. Is there life after death? People of faith have always celebrated God's good news about life, including death. But many people still struggle for the answers, and I've struggled in the past as well. And we ponder those eternal questions of God's presence amidst suffering, aging, health, and of life and death. And I think there are a few different paths that people take. First, some take the path of denial. We believe that we are like Jonathan Livingston Siegel. We never really die. 
we just soar higher onto another plane. We believe that we are all ultimately immortal and that everything turns out just right in the end. It's a denial of death's reality and a defense mechanism often used to deal with the sting of death. A second path often taken is a road of despair. Death becomes all too real. There seems to be no hope. Darkness prevails and life becomes sorrowful and fearful and meaningless. We might hold on to the things of the past and those we've loved in a desperate attempt to find meaning and hope in the midst of it all. But see, sometimes even that Hurt is comforting because the hurt is still a connection. And sometimes we fear even losing the hurt because we don't want to lose that connection. But when, when despair overcomes us, we miss out on the gifts of the present and the future. We need to be careful not to become long sufferers. The third path that can be taken is a road down which scripture reminds us of. It's a path that doesn't deny the reality of death and suffering and pain. It's a path that leads to the cross and the, to the tomb and all its reality. It's a path that also leads to resurrection and eternal life, and it fills us with hope. You see, even in the face of death, we can hold on to our faith in the eternal, and the sting of death can be lessened as we turn to God to find our courage. And we hear the answer to those questions. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believeth in him would not perish, but have eternal life. John hears our cry for mercy in the face of our suffering, and he answers. He comes himself. God enters into the darkness and pain and goes into the depths of our despair and brokenness beyond our death into hell itself. And there he lights a candle of hope and resurrection and offers us that promise of eternal life. He proclaims his gift of love for all who will receive it. So even in the face of death, we come with great hope and with joy to remember and to celebrate. As I reflect upon this list, I recall the richness of the faithful, generous souls all represented here today. The healers, the veterans, the engineers, the pioneers in their respective fields, the women ahead of their times. We experience the precious memories and gratitude for these lives well lived. I'm mindful of all of us humans sitting here grieving, but I can't help but think of this one little squirrel outside who was fed every day by a resident who passed. And as I was in her apartment in the days afterward, that poor animal kept coming and looking. And isn't that what we do? Now, while I read and pray Revelation 21 all too often, I honestly hadn't studied it all that much. And I said to Juliana, why did I choose this scripture? <laughs> the book of Revelation is not an easy one. But in reading commentary, John's book of Revelation, it's known as apocalyptic poetry. The author of the commentary I read is a cancer survivor, and she spoke about how this scripture enables us to move on from whatever devastating place we find ourselves strengthened with the knowledge that something new lies ahead. There's this reassurance that God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and we are here in the middle, and God is with us still. The living God dwells among everything that lies in between. There's this vision of hope, of transformation, and of healing. And it's not an empty hope. 
It's a hope rich with this image of God offering us the life-giving water. Pain becomes a part of us, but there's a newness even in the pain. Those of us who have experienced loss know that. There's something about the pain that changes us. It deepens our faith, and it touches us and creates different people of us. The scripture reminds us, God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, and mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. These words are trustworthy and true. And he said, it is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And to the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of life. So today, as we name and honor these losses in our lives, we trust in the living water, the gift from God who is Alpha and Omega and who holds us. And we know that God himself is with us. God's great love meets ours and takes our tears. We live into that promise of all things new. And that's my prayer for each of us today. As we enter into this season of gratitude, that we can express gratitude for all of these blessed lives that we celebrate today. Amen. And now we will enjoy some more special music from Anita.
As we begin the next portion of our worship service, it is a custom here at Springmore that those who would like, who are family members, when the name of your family member, your loved one, your special friend, when that name is read, you're invited to stand during the reading and then be seated. But all of us have whether we're related or not, we have special connections with some people. So feel free if you want to stand in honor and in memory of a friend, please do so as well. Thanks. Anita Lois Kearney, Grace Elizabeth Cavanis. Dennis W. Layshock, Anne B. Allen, Dorinda B. Burris, Jeanette Stump, Catherine Gail Brock. Ann A. Hambidge, Diana B. Terezas, Alberta L. DiVittorio, James Constantino, Dallas J. Brown, Lucille G. Tillman, Melba B. Crete, Carol J. Lewis, Dwight C. Nissen, Shirley. A. Yeager, Jane S. Steele, Mary C. Buchanan, Ina Bertix, Sandra A. Chapel. Doris L. Brearley, Faye B. Bundy, Jewel B. Christian, Dolores S. Graff. Paul J. Johnson, Irene M. Austin, Barbara B. Volk, Lloyd Arthur Hunsley, Joanne L. Herod. Inza M. Boone, Esther M. Wenzel, Blanche R. Goodwin, Lisa Let Lily Trimborn, Thomas H. Newman. Hale M. Miller, Jan M. Haggerty, Donna J. Dobregos, Jacqueline W. Brown, Ruth A. Smith.
Mary Miller May, Don W. Hansen, Martin Carter, Sue S. Coop, and Robert H. Fleming. I'd like to invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing the hymn of promise. seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have fair, shared with us your beloved children. Before they were ours, they were yours. For all that they have been, for they all have been given to us to make us what we are, for that each of them which lives and grows in each of us and for their lives that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. Please comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw all of us who mourn, and yet remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve and care for one another and give us to know that peace and joy, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now please enjoy this final piece of special music.
We'd like to thank everybody for being with us today. And there is a brief reception outside of the doors here in the alcove if you'd please like to stay and enjoy some time visiting together. Let us receive this benediction. We go forth knowing that God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.